Beware, because you might be attacked. Let's add custom attack animations to our entity. Alright, we found ourselves back in the challenge more. And in this tutorial, we're going to be adding a custom attack animations here to our porcupine entity and all of that without any gecko lip or without anything like that, all in vanilla. Because what we have is we basically already have the animation ready. Because if we take a look at in the previous tutorial, we already added the walk in the aisle animation. But in our mod animations over here, if we scroll down uh, far enough, let's say, then at some point we will find the, the sitting animation, which is also kind of nice. But actually before that, we should also find the, there it is, the porcupine attack animation. So we can add an attack animation. This happens to be with a custom attack goal, which is basically the main center part of this. But before we can add that, we need a couple of things in the entity itself. And the first thing we are going to need is tracked data. Now, tracked data sounds really complicated, but what it really is, is just it's sort of a Boolean or an integer or almost any type of, you know, different data type that is tracked between the server and the client. That's pretty much all that there is to it. So this is going to be a private static final tracked data of type Boolean here in this case. It's going to be called attacking. And this is equal to data tracker dot register data passing in porcupine entity dot class, and then the tracked data handler registry dot boolean, and there you go. This adds the tracked data, and like I said, basically it allows us to track this boolean, and it's automatically going to be synced server and client. And what's extremely important here is that if you have any type of tracked data, you always, always, always have to add the init data tracker method right here. There is no other way, and then what we can do is we can say this dot data tracker dot set and what we want to do is we want to set the attacking to false per default right here and for the sake of argument we're also going to make a public void set attacking so this is going to be basically just setting the attacking to whatever we pass in over here so this is going to be boolean attacking i'm going to say this dot a data tracker dot set the attacking right here to the attacking that we pass in and then we can also do is attacking and this one will just return this dot a data tracker dot get and then once again, passing in attacking right here. And there you go. So this is extremely important because we actually will need to use both of these in both the custom goal that we're going to create in just a moment, as well as in our setup animation states. Because of course, well, we need a different timeout and a different state because these are going to be attacking. So we're going to duplicate the idle animation state in the idle animation timeout. I'm going to call this the attack animation state. And this is going to be the attack animation timeout. Very important. This one, we actually want to make public because we will need to change this in the attack goal as well. But we'll see that in just a moment. And then here in the setup animation states, what we want to do is we want to say if this dot is attacking and the animation state timeout. Nope, the animation, the attack animation timeout is smaller or equal to zero. So the same idea with the that we have with the idle one. Then what we're going to do is we're going to reset the timeout to 40. And we will also say attack animation state dot start passing in this dot age. And then we have another else statement right here, which is going to be minus minus this dot attack animation timeout. So we're going to do this one. There you go. And then what we also want to do, this is quite important if we're not attacking. So if this dot is attacking is false, right? So you can see we're negating this with this exclamation park. It's doing a lot of things over here. So we're negating this. Then we want to say attack animation state dot stop. And with that, we then stop the attacking animation. And let's then also connect the attack animation state to the actual animation with the model over here, right? So we literally just want to duplicate this and say this is the attack animation state. And then this is the attack mod animation here. And now the attack animation is actually properly situated over here. However, of course, we're never setting the attacking over here. So there's no way to basically, well, have the animation play. But we're going to do that now with the AI goal. So let's create a new package right here. That's going to be the AI package. And in there, we'll make the porcupine attack goal. There we go. And this will be an interesting class. So this will extend the melee attack goal right here. We'll hover over this and create constructor matching super. And then I shall be copying over most of the methods over here. And first of all, of course, the class as well as all of the other code is available to you to download in the description below in the GitHub repository. So no worries at all. And we'll start here with having the entity, the attack delay, then an integer ticks until the next attack, and then also a Boolean if we should count until the next attack. The entity is just going to be entity equal to the mob right here dot cast and we're going to cast this to the porcupine entity and that is basically going to be everything we need right here and then there's going to be a couple of methods that we need to override so let's take a look 
First of all, we want to override the start method. So you can see we're basically just resetting the attack delay and the ticks until next attack to 20. Now the numbers over here are specific to our attack. That were basically the attack that I've made right here, then you can see that the attack over here is two seconds long and the attack happens one second into the animation. And that is why the numbers are the way that the numbers are. Basically, we're going to wait 20 ticks or one second until the attack happens and then we're going to reset the attack delay to attack delay times two. Basically, the idea being the first attack takes one second to hit and then of course from one hit to the next is going to take double the time because it's a phase offset. We're also going to have a stop method right here that's going to be at the very bottom because as you can see of course we want to set the attacking to false right when this particular goal stops. We also override the tick method and you can see basically if we should count then what this does is just this just counts down but it but it clamps it at zero that's the idea over here so basically we're counting down ticks until next attack and as soon as it reaches zero, then it's no longer going to be counting down. That's the idea. And then a couple of helper methods, that's going to be a few of them. So number one is going to be the perform attack method, which basically performs an attack on the enemy right here. So you can see that this mob, which is the porcupine entity, is going to try to attack the enemy given right here. And then there's a couple of other things, as you can see, basically just, you know, resetting the cooldown. Is it already time to start, to start the attack animation? And then also, is it time to attack? Because the animation and the attack are two separate things, but we're basically dealing with both of them right here. And then I also have this is enemy with in attack distance. Now, I have that to do here simply because of the fact that the distance to the enemy, this was changed in 120.2, which leads to some weirdness before there was just a is enemy within range method, but now, well, there is just the distance to and you have to calculate it manually. I just put in a two here. This seems to work. Highly recommend it to play around with this number as well. That can always be a good thing. And then lastly, we have the attack method, which is the big thing over here. Basically, you can see, hey, is the enemy even within distance? If it is, then we should count until the next attack. Then here you can see if it's time to start the attack animation, then we're setting the set attack to true, basically meaning that at this tick, the set attacking is set to true, so the attack animation starts, and then if it's time to attack, which is not necessarily at the same time that the attack happens, but rather in this case, it is actually one second into the start animation, then we're good to go, we're performing the attack over here, otherwise we're resetting the cooldown and all of that, and you can see, resetting the cooldown basically happens that the attack delay is now times two, basically the attack delay from one attack to the next is then is then 40 ticks because then it's going to take two seconds and every time it starts so basically you might be like wait wait but if we reset the cooldown over here to 40 now it's going to be 40 well as soon as we stop right this basically gets thrown away and then if we start again the attack delay is once again reset to 20 therefore it works this might be a little bit confusing to you but if you just play it through your head or if we take a look at the uh, block bench one more time it might get a little bit clearer so you can see in the attack animation right here right it's two seconds long but Right, the attack right here happens at one second, and you can see then the next frame over here is going to be the attack, right? So this is when the attack should happen. And then, of course, going from zero to one is one second, makes a lot of sense. But if I start from here, right, all of a sudden it's one second, two seconds until the next attack. That's what we're doing. This is the whole idea of the 20 ticks and the 40 ticks right here. That's all that there's to it. It's basic math, basically. So it should not be confusing, to be honest. And with this attack goal done, we now just have to add this right here. So we can say this.goalselector.add. Let's do this as a priority one. This is a new porcupine attack goal passing in this. And I believe there's a couple of other things that we need to pass in. A speed modifier of 1D and then also a true right here, which is the pause when mob idle. It's very strange. The the Boolean over here, I have still not understand quite significantly because in Forge, it's called follow target even if not seen. And here it's called pause when mob idle. No idea. Just set it to true. That that made it work for me. If it's false, then it doesn't work. So there you go. And we also need to add a target selector. Basically, the idea is that any, you know, it has a attack goal, but who shall we attack? Well, of course, this is determined by the target selector that add, and this is going to be priority one. This is a new revenge goal passing in this idea being if I attack this porcupine, then it's going to attack me back. That's all that there is to it. This is the easiest way to basically show this. There are different types of target selectors. Highly recommended to basically take a look at this. Uh, you can maybe, for example, in the wolf entity, that is always a good one. So highly recommended to go there. And you can see that there are quite a few target selectors right here, right? Attack owner goals. So this is when the owner gets attacked, then this will, this particular entity would attack that person or that mob who attack with owner goal. There's a revenge goal here as well. And you can even set some group revenges and all that. That's like this crazy things that you can do, right? Untamed active 
goal, there's universal anger goal. So there's a lot of lot of different ways that you can target certain things and certain mobs. But in this case, the revenge goal is going to be all that we need. Before we jump in, there was actually a tiny bit of a typo right here in the init data tracker method. Number one, you want to call the super right here, extremely important. And instead of the set method, you actually want to do the start tracking method. I did think it was kind of weird that it was the set method right here, but I didn't think anything of it. What happened here is I just read the wrong line in my notes, but there you go. So basically the init tracker, you want to call the super as well as start tracking, and then we should be good to go. So let's jump in and actually see our porcupine entity attack us back. All right, and here we are in Minecraft again, and let's just go in and actually switch to survival mode. And if I attack the porcupine over here, you can see it's going towards me and then bam, there was the attack animation and it's going to do it again. There we freaking go and it's going to do it again. And if I move away, it's going to fo follow me until it's within range and then whack. There we go. And let's uh, switch to creative mode again. There we go. So that is the attack animation added to Minecraft without any gecko lip or anything like that. Awesome. And in this video, we'll continue with entities, but of the block kind instead. Hope to see you there. So, yeah.